Yo, what's up strategists? Welcome to the Bitcoin strategy. In this video, I'll quickly explain the difference between Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Knots, why you may want to run one over the other, and how you, running a node, whether it be Core or Knots, benefit Bitcoin anyways. Let's get into it. Now, what's a Bitcoin node? A Bitcoin node is a piece of software that it runs and enforces the Bitcoin consensus rules. I'll explain more on that later. Now, there are two types of Bitcoin nodes, prude nodes and full nodes. In general, these nodes will, one, download and keep copies of the blockchain. This includes your transaction history, unspent outputs, and more. Two, enforce the consensus rules. Three, provide access for users to access its data. So if you have a Bitcoin wallet and if you were to ever query the transactions in that wallet, it will connect to a Bitcoin node and ask the Bitcoin node for that data. Now, four, it will validate blocks mined by miners. Make sure the miners aren't mining any invalid blocks. And five, accept and organize new Bitcoin transactions through mempool policy. Now, the main difference between prune nodes and full nodes is being the amount of data they store. Prune nodes will store the last, at least the last 550 megabytes of the chain, although you can configure it. And full nodes will store the entire chain. Now, I will put a picture up on the screen of how much a full node takes up in terms of data once I edit it. Now, both types of nodes have their strengths and weaknesses, but most home users like you and I want to run a full node to take advantage of the entire change history. Now, running a node helps keep Bitcoin decentralized, censorship resistant, and even provides privacy to you by allowing you to keep your Bitcoin wallet traffic within your own home. If you own Bitcoin, you should run a node. Now, what are consensus rules? To understand consensus rules, we must first understand mempool policy. You can think of mempool policy as rules that exist, but not everyone follows, nor are they really enforced. You may think of speeding or drinking in public as immoral, but if it's not widely enforced, other people may commit those very acts you find immoral. That's what mempool policy is. Mempool policy allows you to choose what transactions make it or don't make it in your mempool, but not so much for other people's mempools. These policies can include um, the amount of transactions in your mempool. All transactions must have a fee. How big transactions can be. Blocks must be limited to one megabyte or four million segwit units. Whether or not the transactions in your mempool should allow op returns and more. Now, consensus rules are the opposite. Consensus rules are the laws in Bitcoin that if you break, you'll be shunned, fined, and or punished for. Laws like forgery, assault, theft, and fraud. Now, some basic Bitcoin consensus rules include transaction fees. All transactions must have a transaction fee. Block size. Blocks must be limited to one megabyte or four million segwit units. And the 21 million cap. The amount of coins in the network cannot go over 21 million. If a miner were to try and submit a block or a block with the transaction that breaks one of these Bitcoin consensus rules, Bitcoin nodes will reject that block. However, if a miner mines a block that conflicts with your mempool policy, your node will download that block anyways, as that transaction or that block doesn't break the consensus rules. Now, how does all of this tie into Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Knots? Now, Bitcoin Knots gives you more control over the mempool policies mentioned earlier in this video. If you decide to choose Knots, you'll regain control of what transactions make it or don't in the Bitcoin network. However, however, if you choose to filter out some transactions from your node, this does not mean that miners won't be able to mine them. As miners have mempool policies of their own that they can pick and choose transactions from. Now, here's a great example of this. This is Ocean. Uh, let me go back. This is Ocean. This is a pool that removes transactions that have arbitrary data in it, like JPEGs or runestones. Now, as we can see, this is messed up. Now, as we can see on the left under expected block, all the purple transactions are the ones that have arbitrary data. Those were removed from the block. And on the right, these are the transactions that were actually mined. Now, if we pick one of these purple transactions, the ones that were not mined, we can see that this is our ocean block right here, 896345 right here. And the one that's selected, this block, the one that was mined after the ocean block, mined by via Bitcoin, it got mined in this block. So 
if one mining pool doesn't like a transaction, it'll go to the next one and the next one and the next one until one mining pool accepts it. So that's how um, people can get around mempool policy. Now, mempool policy does help prevent the spread of transactions that you may think are bad because they don't go to your node. The less nodes a transaction goes to, the less it will and the less it has a chance of getting mined. Now, mempool policy helps prevent the spread of transactions that you may think are bad, but if the policy you've set is not widely adopted across the network, that transaction will go through anyways. Now that we know Knots' major selling point, the ability to have more control over our mempool, but not everyone else's, you should still consider switching to Knots if you care about the network's decentralization. For reasons I explained in my video, covering the attacks targeted towards Bitcoin Core. If the core devs were to ever push for changes like this again, it'd be easier for us as a community to reject them by already having a defense of that being Bitcoin Knots. As Bitcoin Knots will not implement any changes in favor of arbitrary data on the blockchain like JPEGs, tokens, rune stones, and they will give us control over our own mempool if we want to allow them or not. Now in short, Choosing the correct Bitcoin node is trivial, not just to the success of the Bitcoin network, but to your own success. Running a node can enhance your privacy, give you a say in the network's consensus, and provide the network with more collateral against censor centralization and censorship attacks. So run a node. Now, if you found this content of any value, please feel free to like, comment, or even subscribe. It's very much appreciated. And as always, stay orange pilling, stack sats, and have a great rest of your day.